Hey everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name's Elbert and today we're going to be trying something new. I just got off of work and I thought it'd be fun to just chat with you guys about various random topics like graphic design, career, art, or just about life. Today we're going to be chatting about being a visual designer at Google and how I got my job there and the process behind that. Also moving to New York after graduating and what it's like being a designer during the pandemic. So a quick intro about my experience. I went to Art Center College of Design and studied in graphic design in the BFA program. Originally I was debating on whether to go to CalArts as a fine art major because I've been drawing and painting and illustrating throughout my childhood and in high school as well or pursue graphic design in Art Center which is super new to me and it's in an unknown territory. My sister who's also a really talented graphic designer was going to Art Center at the time and she really pushed me to try out the graphic design route. Art Center is known to host these really amazing events called Grad Night where these graduating students would showcase all of their favorite works they've done throughout the years and show it off to companies for potential hirings or even to friends and families so my sister took me to one of these and i was floored i was blown away i wish i could have had a picture for you guys but it was like super intimidating you know these people were dressed all posh and really cool and i'm just like a high schooler and all with my mouth all open so you know i definitely didn't have the courage to take a picture so during art center i learned how great graphic design was in terms of if you're not sure what kind of particular work you want to do because i definitely didn't know what i wanted to do because i didn't even know what graphic design was but you know throughout the years you figure out that graphic design has a lot of tracks where you could do animation and motion or you could do something more digital like user interface making apps coding processing or you can also do the traditional route where it's pure graphic design where you're creating brand identities and logos like posters and editorial books so my first year in art center i was definitely in shock and kind of like a deer in headlights where you know everything was new to me and i really didn't know what i was doing so mostly just faking it till i make it but the friends you make and also learning from the teachers is such an important experience to help develop your taste and also design style so how did i get into google our last year we also had a graduation show and art center invited a bunch of different companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Google, and also some really cool medium to small size studios as well. I was hella nervous because from other people's experience, they said grad night is you know super fast paced. It's intimidating. You're gonna be talking to eight to ten different companies going on stop for like three hours straight. You know, people's mouths be drying and you know coughing and all that stuff. So I definitely had to practice and get through the rhythms. So during this time, I was really not sure what kind of route I wanted to take, whether I wanted to work for a big company a small company like a startup or even really cool small studios i was definitely open to anything but you know talking with my peers and classmates we all kind of wanted to work at these really big companies so that was all of our dreams as my classmates and friends were talking with these big companies i was pretty bummed because you know it was getting close to the end of the interview and i didn't get a chance to speak with any of them yet as it came closer to the end of the day this guy in all black with a black baseball cap black sweater and he was like munching on almonds came to my booth and i'm like who is this guy like it's, it's like super casual right i thought it was like someone's dad or a friend or a family member and you know we started talking about skateboarding because on my booth by next to my name i had this big slogan like hi i'm elbert i'm a skateboarder who falls a lot and you know now thinking about it, it sounds kind of corny but at that time I'm, I'm super thankful that i wrote that he also skateboarded which you know we had the similarities with and you know i presented my work to him i showed him and we chatted some more he told me that he liked my work and that he was actually a senior art director at google and sf and you know my butt clenched with fear when i heard that and i was like oh shit, did i mess it up was i too casual and like not as professional because i didn't know if he was a recruiter or not so it was more like a friend vibes right the communication but i think that really helped us to you know warm things up and to get to know each other more and to feel each other's vibes you know in the graphic design community it's definitely about the vibe how i can work with you well i think you got a good sense of that so he said my work was very experimental and it fit with another team in particular called google creative lab in new york and he said he'll help reach them out to me and you know connect us together so i thanked him and i totally forgot and blanked out to ask him for his email address or any form of contact information so you know, this mysterious man slowly disappeared into the crowd with his black cap and still munching on almonds. And, you know, I didn't see him until 
like a year later where I met him at New York and I thanked him for you know opening the doors for me so that was how he connected me to Google Creative Lab and that's how the interview process came so the interview process at Google is definitely different depending on what major and field you're in from my experience in the graphic design department it's known to be a little more relaxed and chill and heavy on relation to your portfolio and work number one is your website and portfolio your work really gets you to the front door and makes a good first impression keep in mind that these recruiters are looking at hundreds of different websites so really think about how you design your homepage, how to make it look stand out and also how to make it simple to navigate so there's no distractions or they click off somewhere else another thing that's important for interviewing is your demeanor and how you come across when interviewing many times when you get the interview just know that they really like your work now they're trying to see if your personality meshes well with their team it's not like you have to be super extroverted and bubbly but more so easygoing and willing to take criticism and feedback another thing to practice on is talking and elaborating about your work and projects these recruiters are already seen your work so when you're actually interviewing with them how can they learn something new about your work how can you story tell and make it interesting for them to learn oh that's why you use a certain font or color or style we're also living in a digital age with the pandemic so a lot of these interviews are going to be held via digital like zoom google meets or even facetime so make sure your audio is working well and also video also do your research on the company you're working for the history the founders and why it was created and the type of works they do because they might hit you with the question like why do you want to work there so you're prepared for that and lastly asking good questions at the end is really important many times in these interviews they're gonna hit you with the question at the end like do you have any questions for us that's the time for you to really spark your curiosity and interest and make them notice that you're really interested in a company like a question you can hit them back with is what is your favorite thing about working at the company and they also get excited to share and talk about their experience as well happy to go more in detail with these interviews and tips with you guys in the next video just let me know so the interview process was pretty lengthy about a month and a half and it was about four to five in total the first and second one was with the recruiter the third and fourth one was with two senior designers and an art director and the last one was follow up with the recruiter most of the interviews were repetitive and just really talking about my work and the process behind them it was also me the interviewing to learn more about the company and the types of work they do and if i really wanted to join them as well so you know you also have to think is this the type of company i want to work for so after a month of interviewing the recruiter reached out and i got an offer and i moved straight up to new york without looking back things sped up really quickly i had to be in new york in two weeks so i was looking through craigslist looking at rooms for available and also doing interviews with the roommates as well to see if I'm a good fit so uh, definitely a lot of interviews during that time I think a really big reason why I got the job was definitely practicing talking about each of my works making it clear and digestible and also really holding in that storytelling skill and talking about your concepts and the process behind why you made certain decisions a lot of it's how you start your project off and how you end it think of it like a story right in the beginning when you talk about your project how do you want to introduce and start off in the middle is there a climax is there a problem that you solved and in the end how do you outro it how do you conclude it too another weird and useful tip that my teacher taught us was to look at yourself in the mirror like straight dead in the eyes and recite your interview and practice with that because you know it's very awkward in the beginning but as you really practice and hone in that skill you get used to it and it becomes easy so i think that mentally prepares you for looking at a stranger as well because during these interviews it's also nerve-wracking because you never met this person before and it's a new face so looking at yourself in a mirror has some kind of psychological effect where you get used to it and you're not as scared and don't really blank out i also really loved animation and incorporating that into my work so i really made sure to showcase that into my portfolio as well it gave me a leverage it gave me additional skill that these recruiters saw that said oh elber knows a little bit of motion so that might help us in a certain project so if you have any additional skills like photography processing coding or video editing Make sure to include a few projects in your portfolio too to showcase your work and show them that it could benefit them too. Also, I did a lot of research on the company and made sure that I knew my shit when getting in and the types of work that they do and the designers and what they're known for. So at the end, I could ask some follow-up questions like, I saw this project and that's super exciting. Can you talk about 
the process behind that and what types of future projects are you working on is it similar to the current project so a lot of different things you could come up with and talk about when you do the research so what was it like working at creative lab it was crazy fun first of all just moving to new york was a whole different journey and adventure the city was really lively you know i'm from a small suburban quiet neighborhood so new york is like the complete opposite when you open the door it felt like a movie people were playing music each block had their own vibe and style and you know the kids were playing with the fire hydrants when it got really hot it's funny i think los angeles people are known to be very smiley and happy sometimes for no reason so when i moved there i said hi to this guy on the street in front of my apartment i was like hey how's it going with the big smile on my face and he said he told me to fuck off so i was like oh shit maybe that's why everyone in the new york subway trains are like very quiet they keep to themselves and they always like read a book or look at their phone so that was kind of like a slap in face so you know i never again did i have a very big smile and said how is it going to a stranger in new york anymore working at google creative lab was a great experience as a visual designer so they're a very small and intimate team at google that take on very big experimental projects there are a few different teams inside the company and each one is focused on a particular role one is focused more on advertising another is focused more on promoting new technologies and they're comprised of a lot of different professions like a creative engineer graphic designer art director photographer and cinematographer so a very collaborative space what i learned working at google was how well they treat their employees there isn't a lot of late nights and cramming and stressing over getting projects done versus a smaller studio this is because larger companies have more resources to allocate project managers to help delegate the time and to make sure that everything gets done what was also great about working at google was working with creative engineers they think super logical and you know us designers are super emotional as well so it was like learning a new language and talking with them and collaborating them was a whole new experience that I think other companies you can't really get from. Being a designer during the pandemic is definitely a privilege because it offers a lot of flexibility and ease of working remote. We're constantly working on a computer all the time, so working remote is very adaptable and doesn't decrease workflow or productivity. Working from home definitely has its perks as you can wear your pajamas and eat whenever you want and have a chill atmosphere. But what I miss the most about working on campus is the coworkers and the intimacy of how you work off of each other's ideas and having that collaborative environment you know it's always nice to work at home but working at the office although you dread it some days it does keep you on your toes and makes you do good work it's nice to work at home and it's comfortable but there's something about walking into your work and having cool co-workers to help give you that energy is you know it's kind of contagious i think a little cheat code to working during the pandemic and if you miss that collaborative working area is to work at a local coffee shop there's something nice about surrounding yourself with people small talking and also working as well that gives you that same energy if you're working at your studio or working area too but we're definitely really spoiled to be working on a desk in front of a laptop with nice ac blowing at us all day so we can't really complain so if you have any questions or curious about something that i didn't cover in this video feel free to leave a comment down below and i'll make sure to cover that in our next one happy to answer anything hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks again for watching i'll catch you on the next one Peace.